Hello and welcome back to Left Brain Artist, uh, where we take an analytical approach to acrylic paint pouring. Today we're going to uh, assemble some quick items from my house and do a paint pour. I believe most people have everything they need today to start paint pouring and I want to show you that it's possible and that it can be fun. So join me here and we will go pick up a few items and get the party rolling. So to start off, we're going to get into my art drawer. Having little kids, we have lots of little things like this around. The first thing we're going to grab is Elmer's School Glue. And then I am going to grab this little kit that we got from Ikea that has some acrylic paints that we're going to use here. And last but not least, we're going to grab a few craft sticks or popsicle sticks. So next, I'm going to come over here to my utility drawer. I'm going to grab a letter opener. I'll show you why here in one second. I'm going to get in this drawer. Grab a plastic bag to cover our canvas with. And then out here in the garage where the lights will kick on here, I'm just going to grab a piece of wood from my little wood bin. Just some uh, white oak, just a piece of extra wood that I've had out here. And let's get back to it. So the last thing we're going to grab is some cups from my little water machine here. And in just a few minutes, we have all our items together. We'll start painting. All right, now I have everything assembled. I have my craft sticks, Elmer's glue or school glue, my acrylic craft paint. I added a little bit of water, some cups, a little piece of wood, and a trash bag and a letter opener. So first, we're gonna move this off here. We're going to open the trash bag up. Now this may this may actually be quite large enough for our thing here, but just in case, one of the nice things about a letter opener is you can take a trash bag right on the corner. As long as you don't catch yourself, slice it right down the side without needing scissors, without being off. Then, I can open the bag up to cover exactly what I want. So just a little trick. So next, I'm actually going to take four of these cups. I'm going to place them down. You can use regular cups. Uh, acrylic paint is non-toxic. So I'm just going to put these a little closer. And let's just make sure that you can see. Come right out to here. That is much better. Put the camera up slightly. So, first we have our pour base here. Now you can color this first with a Mod Podge or just use some of the paint to cover it. Let it dry for a couple hours and then paint on top of it. Uh, to save a little time, we're going to uh, skip that step, but that will keep um, any edges and the top side that may not get covered with paint, it will still have some color. So next, we're going to pull a couple of these cups out, and I'm going to grab a little bit of this paint. 
paint, I'm going to choose purple. And I'm actually going to open them up. And again here, I'm not using a whole lot. I'm just going to cover the bottom of this. So again, it's not a huge amount. Maybe a quarter inch at the bottom of this. Uh, let's do some pink. And then this had a little bit of dried stuff on the outside, so I'm just going to grab that up. If you leave dried stuff in your paint, you will get little splotches. So we're going to do the same thing. Now I've got our paint. Now I'm going to take some, again, just washable school glue. Uh, you can use the glue all. Uh, I think the glue all actually works better um, than the than this school glue, but either will work. I'm going to put the exact same amount of glue as I have paint. cut these in half because uh, that way I don't waste as many and they last longer. And then I'm just going to stir this all up. Just like that. I don't want to stir too much uh, because it'll make bubbles show up. Um, but if you'll notice, and I'm going to grab the paint and glue off of here to make sure it gets stirred up also. If you notice here, it, this is pretty thick. So what we want to do is we're going to stir all these up and then we're going to use this water that we got to get them to be a little bit less thick. Just want to make sure you scrape all the paint off the bottom if you put it in first. This gold is really thick. This is how thick this is. So we don't want it to be Cairo syrup thick. We want it to be warm honey thick. So we're gonna add a little bit of water. A little too much, so I'm just gonna pour a little into there. Usually it's about uh, seventy percent glue, thirty percent water. I'm just gonna stir this up well. And again, see how that's coming? It's coming off, but it's making a big mound. So I need a little bit more water. You don't want to use too much water because if you use too much water, the binder that keeps the acrylic paints together will start to separate and then uh, you're more likely to get cracks and other imperfections in your paint. So I'm gonna stir the rest of these up and then show you the consistency and we will be right back. All right, so we're gonna look at the consistency here of the paint. Uh, I know it's a little hard to see there, but if you drop the paint in 
it makes a little mound and then it disappears. So that's kind of the, the consistency that we want. Now one other thing, if any of you guys have sample paints like this from Lowe's or Home Depot, this will actually work in place of acrylic paint also. So you could definitely use that. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have leftover paint from home. You know, it doesn't have to be the sample paint, it can be the big, the big items of paint. Um, the different types of acrylic paint that you use, you can get different uh, effects from. So next, we're just gonna grab another one of these cups. Pop it right here, and we're just gonna layer some of these colors right into the new cup. And I don't wanna to pour too fast, because see how the color is just sitting right on top? If you pour too fast, it'll go through the previous colors and won't make uh, the effect that I wanna see here. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that, it just does things a little bit differently. So we're going to layer these in. And we'll just do the exact same Save a little of this for the end. I didn't even get close to filling these pixie cups uh, with paint because you know, when you add them all together, obviously you're gonna have much more. Uh, on my blog, leftbrainartist.com, you can find a, the blog post, how much paint do I need for an acrylic pour? So it'll give you a little spreadsheet on how much paint you need for an acrylic pour that you can use. So this is what's called the dirty pour. We're just pouring all the, the paints into a single cup. Uh, you could pour this straight out if you wanted to. In my case, I'm gonna do a flip cup, which means I'm going to take this, flip it upside down, let it sit for just one second. And then when I open this up, I'm kind of gonna slide it this way and pull the cup off because I don't want the drips to happen inside the paint. So we're just gonna kind of bring that pattern around here. One of the hardest things with acrylic pours, especially like this, is to get the corners painted. So I'm just gonna give them a little help out right to get. So if you notice, there's a lot of little bubbles here. Um, most acrylic painters have a torch that they use to get rid of those bubbles, but you can actually just use a lighter and get kind of close and it'll pop those bubbles. Um, for this first pour, you don't really have to do that. You don't want to get the paint too thick because it will, not too thick, too warm because it will dry. We should pop a couple of these bigger ones. Nothing wrong there. Okay, and then just gonna slowly let the paint on one side. And I'm gonna bring it back to the center once I'm done. I'm just slowly let the paint go to this side. And back to the center. Slowly let it go to this side. And back to center here. So one thing to notice, as I'm doing this paint, it looks like pieces are moving faster than other pieces. That's a quick indicator that your paints aren't the exact same consistency. Um, with practice, you'll do that. There's a couple other methods to make sure that your paints are the exact same consistency. So one thing I am gonna do, is I'm gonna kinda move this corners out. This will help the paint flow into those corners a little bit better. I don't have to worry about paint running off as I'm, as much paint running off as I'm trying to get the paint to move. So we're just gonna let that flow off over there. And come back. Back to this side. You can see that it's moving. People talk about the weight of the paint. You can see these little areas here where the paint is moving readily. 
that's where the weight of the paint is and that's where your your movement is going to come from so we're just adjusting the weight of the paint off to different sides and last but not least we're going to go to this corner Extra fell off there. You don't want too much paint left on the canvas, or else when it dries, uh, again it will start cracking and cratering. So then I'll leave this to dry. Um, it'll be dry to the touch in about three days. Dry to and it will cure in about uh, 14 days, and then you could put a coating on it and layer it there. But again. This is just a quick tutorial to show you how you can start acrylic paint pouring today with what you have in your house. Before we go, I just want to show you a quick painting. This is one of my earliest paintings that I did, also on a piece of wood. And I used two different flip cups. And it kind of looks like a galaxy there, but you can really make some beautiful paintings from acrylic paint pouring. So I hope you enjoy this video. Hit a like. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and we will see you next week. Thank you.